Hello everybody and welcome to my Q&A. Thank you everyone for sending in your questions. And if you have sent in some questions that I haven't answered, sorry that I couldn't answer, but like I said to you before, it was gonna be the first 10 questions I received. So like I say, if I can't answer your questions, it means that you just got in a bit too late. But like I said to you before, thank you everyone for sending in your questions. I'm gonna kick it off. The first question came in from newcomen.23. He asked me, who would you buy to strengthen the Arsenal defence and who would you sell? Well, there'd be a lot of defenders that I would sell because I believe the Arsenal defence is uncoachable. you got players like David Luiz, but then David Luiz can probably play more further up in the midfield. Chambers. Socrates. Mustafi. They would probably be the main four that I would sell. But then I'm thinking, if I was to pick three out of them four, and what I said before is with David Louise, he can probably play further up in the midfield. I would get rid of the likes of Chambers. I believe all this backing up stuff. Watch the game yesterday. Watch the highlights against Norwich. They've run. From the midfield for the second goal, backing off, backing off, backing off. Mustafi, Chambers. You look at it, it's like, when are you actually going to make a tackle? And this is the reason why I say Mustafi and Chambers I'll get rid of. The reason why I get rid of Socrates, which people might be surprised with, people might not be surprised with, people might agree with me. But the reason why I say Socrates is because I believe he's not really bring in what he brings from Bruce Lee Dortmund. Yes, he's quick, but he's that liability again, mistakes in him, challenges that really, like you look at the game against Bournemouth, it could have cost us, or was it the game against Aston Villa? I think it was the game against um, Aston Villa, where he nearly gave a penalty away. It was a penalty to me, when he handballed it, put his arm out, but why? It's just them sort of silly mistakes. And you kind of think to yourself, they would be the main three from the back line. Because I believe the likes of Tierney, he's going to come good. Bellerin still needs to adapt. Rob Holding come back as well. There's players that can do a job there. But the other players that I've mentioned, I just believe they're uncoachable players. I thought Chambers, when he first came into the team at the start of the season, I thought he looked excellent against Newcastle. But it's just, I don't know what the mentality or what the defensive coaching are doing in the Arsenal Tra training this backing up stuff needs to stop you would never do it on a Sunday league but I know it's not the same sort of like level and stuff like that but you would never back off and back off and back off they were getting shots when Pookie's got backing off backing off he just had a clear shot so you just got to look at the game look at the game yesterday and you know what I'm kind of talking about there will be the three players would be Chambers Socrates and who else did I mention I can't remember my mention, my head's gone. Chambers, Socrates, and Mustafi. Yeah, they will be the three players I would get rid of. Three players that I'll get in. I think Koulibaly from Napoli will probably be a dream move for Arsenal to get, but do I believe we can get him? Probably not. But if I was to pick a player, he would be the number one on my list for definitely getting in. Because I believe a player like him will come in and absolutely solid that back line. And he will make sure players around him look. He's in control of that back four and he would actually do the job. I think Koulibaly would be number one on my list. Number two, and the reason why I say Duffy, Duffy is an absolute ball winner. I watch him when he plays for Ireland. And Ireland's sort of tactics are, we get a free kick, long free kick, play it into Duffy and he'll win. Probably 90% of them headers. If he's not flicking it onto the goal, he's flicking it onto another player. And I think, believe with Duffy as well, he'll do a job at the back line as well. And another player, and the reason why I say this sort of player as well, and don't think it's because it's the island sort of connection and stuff like that, but Doherty for Wolves. Bellerin, like I say, he's going to come back good and stuff like that. But I believe Bellerin needs that kind of like challenge as well and Doherty can play further up the pitch as well but I believe Doherty is you just look 
You look at his um, assists last season, you look at his goals, he's even scored at the weekend. He brings that sort of different dimension. And players always want to go for the 50, the 60s, or the fans want to go for the 50, 60 million pound players. Get these sort of players in and they'll strengthen Arsenal side, 100%. There will be the three players I'll bring in. Goodbye, Dr. T and Duffy. Second question came in from Bruno. Do you think we will get Champions League next season? <clears throat> Current form? No. But things in football can change. Things in football can completely change. Chelsea getting beaten at home to West Ham. No one expected that. Chelsea are in a good run of form. No one expected it. You even look at the game against Le Leicester and Everton yesterday. Everton are struggling. Leicester get that last minute goal through VAR. Anything can happen. There's no guarantees in football. I just believe Arsenal need to start getting on this run now because we've got some big games this month. Big games. If even on the 1st of January, a big game. We need to get results against Brighton during the week. And then you've got them three big home games in a row. Man City, Chelsea, Man United. So, I would say, if you ask me this question next month, after we played all them big three, I could answer it. But you just don't know. Current form, no chance. But you just don't know. Arsenal could go on this run. Every team has a run. From the lower teams down to the bottom of the league. They all, everyone goes on a run. Unless you're completely... Shambolic like Derby had years ago when they picked up like the, the lowest point tally in the Premier League. You just don't know anything can happen in football. But current form, no chance. No chance. We haven't even won in the last six games in the Premier League. Eight games in all competitions. So current form, no. But maybe if you ask me this question next month, if I do do another Q&A, I might have a different answer or I might have the exact same answer. But thank you for your question. Third question came in from Hussein underscore C. Thoughts about Freddie's style of play going to be and his focus. Now, Freddie's style of play surprised me yesterday. Because I, be I believed and I thought with Emery going, I thought, oh my God, this is going to be it. Shackles are going to be off the players. Players are going to have all this freedom. And then I seen the team line up and I thought, really? No Torreira? No Pepe? And I thought, really? Even no Tierney? But I don't know people are saying about the Tierney situation is he struggles to play two games in a week. Well, if that's the case, why do we play him in the Europa League? Premier League's a bit more of a kind of like dogfight that we need to kind of get back and get these results. So I believe when I seen the team line up and I thought, all right, cool. We'll see how we go. But then saying that, going forward, we look decent. We look really decent going forward. And then I just thought, all right, cool. But he's only had one training session. So style of play, we're not going to see any style of play. We're just going to see players playing the way they want to play at the moment until Freddie embeds his sort of style that he wants to get into the team. So Probably questions probably come a bit too soon, but we'll see how we go against Brighton and then West Ham next Monday. And then we might be able to kind of see a situation with Freddie Style and his focus going forward. But thank you for your question. Fourth question came in from Simon Agroff. He asked me, best player since Henri Bergkamp and Vieira. Now, since then days, We've had, so Vieira, he left in 2005. Henri left in 2007, came back for a spell. And then Burkamp, he retired in 2006. Yeah, because it was the first game that we played at the Emirates. So yeah, taking out of um, Henri's sort of like comeback for three or four games, or whatever it was. Um, best player since then? I'd probably have to say Santi Cazorla, magician. I've seen him, he made it look so easy. He takes corners with his right foot, he takes corners with his left foot, he scores three kicks with his right foot, he scores three kicks with his left foot. 
and a guy is like probably the same height as me and he's just literally running through players bouncing off players the magician and it's just so gutting for him and maybe for us as well that the injury that he had or not injury that he had the situation he had where he needed that major surgery on on himself you know what I mean so I think we didn't we've seen a great Sandy Cazola but I believe if that situation didn't happen we could have seen an absolute amazing Sandy Cazola and I just feel so sorry for him like, but you look at him now he's gone back to Spain Seville was a Villa, not Seville Villarreal sorry and he's scoring goals again been called up to the Spain squad again so looking at it the guy's a magician and to me since then players like the like you say the Vieiras the Burkamps the Henri's all them sort of players Sandy Gazzola probably for me is the one that stands out thank you for your question next question coming from Scott underscore Hunter underscore 95 he asked me who do you think we will bring in January and who do you want as next manager? Like I say, who do I think we'll bring in in January? If you were talking about players wise, I would probably say they definitely need to bring in a defender, but normally in January, you're not going to get the biggest sort of names. You're not going to get, I don't know. I really do not know. I just don't know what the board's ambition is to bring in new players. Because at the end of the day, if Freddie Lundberg's still there in January, why would they bring any players in if they know they're probably going to get a new manager? Because that might not be what the manager wants. He might not want that player. So I don't believe they'll probably bring in anyone. If Freddie's still in the job, I don't believe they'll bring in anyone because he's only there as an interim manager. I just don't think it'll be a great idea to bring in any new players for a new manager to come in and go, that player's not in my plans. So then they've wasted money on bringing players in for literally nothing really. But speaking of new managers, I think a manager that I would like to see come in, Pochettino. Now people might say, yes, he'd won nothing at Tottenham. And he's won nothing in his career. But you could see the difference when he was at Southampton, what he did. He makes players better than what they are. Tottenham, he literally got them to the Champions League finals on zero players he bought. Zero budget. Didn't buy anyone, got them in the Champions League. Yes, that Champions League was an absolutely crazy Champions League last year where teams were just like turning everything around. But I just believe he just does get that extra bit and he brings the youth in and we want to see the youth come in and that's what we were like with Wenger he sort of great thing was he actually made players from the youth bring them up and give them that chance and I think believe Pochettino but I believe number one on my list would be Brendan Rodgers absolutely excellent manager but I just don't believe Brendan Rodgers would come because he doesn't want this on his CV where he left um, Celtic halfway through a season when they're going for the treble treble and now you're looking at the likes of um, Leicester they're like fighting with Liverpool for a Premier League. So I just don't believe Brendan Rodgers will probably come, but he will probably be number one on my list. He didn't rule it out yesterday. He did say in his press conference that he's got a 14 million buyout clause. He didn't rule nothing out. So maybe, maybe it's Brendan Rodgers. But they're really the two I'll probably go for. I know people probably say about the Allegri. I did say about Allegri, but I think in the Allegri situation it might be the same as the Emery situation. He won the league in Juventus where it was basically a one team league basically back then and he doesn't speak the greatest English. I don't know if it would be the situation where it would be a good thing for us, but he would shore up the defence. So three candidates would probably be, yeah, Allegri number three, Pochettino number two, and then Brendan Rodgers number one. That's what I'd say bring as manager. But players-wise... I don't believe they'll bring anyone if Freddie's still in the job. Thank you for your question, though. Next question came in from AFC1415, or you could say it, 1415. He said to me, when do you think we will win the league again? <clears throat> I 
nowhere near. Absolutely nowhere near. We are nowhere near from winning the league. Nowhere near. And it's sad to see, like, because I remember, like, when we had that Invincibles. I look back at it when we had that Invincible season and we played Leicester on the last day of the season. And if you would have said to me, back in 2004, Leicester, who we beat on the last day of the season to go the whole season unbeaten, who got relegated the same day or relegated that season, if you would have said to me, they would win the league, the Premier League, before you, I would have laughed and laughed. And now I'm looking at it and kind of going, Leicester won the league. Leicester are second challenging for the league this season. Football is a crazy game. Like I say, I don't believe we're anywhere near. And I think it's a long, 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 long sort of situation where we're going to have. It's a long journey. It's a long journey. Yeah. We've got to all just take it in. Literally, just take it in. We know we went nine years about winning a trophy. And it's been 15 years, but it will be 16 years by the time the season's finished that we won the league. And I just think it could be another 10. If things are going the way they're going, the way the board's ambition is, I don't think the board's ambition is to us to win the league. I believe the board's ambition is for us just to qualify for Champions League. And until that ambition changes, it's a long, long way away. It's a long, long way away. The ambition is to qualify for Champions League. You look at fans around as well. Just want to qualify for Champions League to attract the players. Our ambition should be, as Arsenal Football Club, should be to win the league every season. But we're miles away from that. Absolutely miles away from that. And like I say, it could be 10 years from now, unless the board changed their ambitions. Thank you for your question, Joe. Seventh question came in from Original D-Boy. Do you think Arsenal should pay the 14 million to get Rodgers in? Just to answer that question a couple of questions ago. I believe yes. And like I said, he hasn't ruled it out. He has not ruled it out. But I just believe for him and his sake, for his CV. But then at the end of the day, why would you turn down an opportunity? And people might say, but yeah, look at Leicester, the second in the league. We've got to remember, this is Arsenal Football Club. This is not, These jobs don't come along many times for managers. You know what I mean? They're, sometimes they'll say, look, sorry, I've done what I want to do with you. I need you, you know what, I want to go and move to Arsenal. And I believe he can bring another dimension. He can bring, look at Liverpool. Now Liverpool, can, before Brendan Rodgers, were finishing top six, seventh, whatever, fifth, all that sort of situation. Maybe get Champions League here and there, Champions League football, and then they probably end up winning it and stuff like that, so they go in Champions League next year. But other than that, they were losing 10 games a season. Brendan Rodgers comes in and he nearly wins the league with them. He nearly wins the league with Liverpool. Goes to Celtic and people say, oh, it's just a Celtic. You know what I mean? But when's anyone else won back-to-back trebles? Yes, it's the Scottish League, but when's anyone else won the back-to-back trebles? When he was at Swansea, he got them into the Premier League. So the thing with... Brendan Rodgers, he does bring that extra dimension that we need. So I believe, yes, we should pay the 14 million. And I just don't know how long Arsenal will wait. They were going to do it. How long will they wait for it? But 100%, I believe Arsenal should pay the 14 million to get Brendan Rodgers in because he would be my number one on the list. 100%. Thank you for your question, though. Ninth question came in from Rian.Hendu. Who do you... Who needs to be sacked next? Now, I don't know. If you're saying that as probably the Premier League, so you're not talking about Arsenal. So looking at managers in the Premier League, who needs to be sacked next? Well, it's only out of really two, isn't it? It's out of Silva. And then it's probably out of Man United, Solskjaer. I believe with Man United, I think, if it was a situation where Solskjaer wasn't a legend and he didn't do what he did for Man United, he'd have been long gone. He'd have been absolutely long gone. His record since he signed that contract has been shocking. I don't even know if it's over 50% win ratio since he's taken over or since he's got the new contract. So, I don't know. Silva, he was unlucky yesterday. But it's... It's Everton, you look at it and you kind of go, they've got the players in. 
but they're just not performing. He done the same thing when he was at Watford. When Everton started knocking at the door, his results went down. And now he's at Everton. So it's out of them two, really. Silva and Solskjaer. Because we've got rid of our manager already. So if you'd have asked me that question last week, number one on the list would have been Unai Emery, 100%. But yeah, if you're talking about managers, but then ones I think it's out of Silva and out of Solskjaer, who would be sat next? And if I was to say who would probably would be sat next, it would probably be Silva. But then you're looking at Everton's game, who would really want to come in at the moment? Because you're not really coming into the easiest start. So I believe Everton might hang on to him a bit. And Solskjaer, I think he's just got the, he's got the history, Champions League final goal to winner. You know what I mean? So, but it'd be out of them two if I was to say who, who needs to be sacked next. Thank you for your question, though. Next question came in from Ben Cassidy. He goes to me, who is the most likely manager and do you think we can get, who do you, who is the most likely manager and do you think we could have one against Brighton? Um, no, we will not get one against Brighton. I don't think Arsenal's in a rush. You look at um, Josh Conkey's interview on the Arsenal website, and he said that there's no point just getting one for the sake of getting one. It's basically buying your time and getting the right one, not just getting one. It's getting the right one. So I don't believe we'll have any one against Brighton. But like I said to you before, who do I think? I think Arsenal need to be bold. I think they just need to go for Brendan Rodgers. And if they don't go for Brendan Rodgers, do not buy time in it and go out and get Pochettino. If they're not going to go for Brendan Rodgers because they're not going to pay the 40 million, a man's free. Literally, the guy from down the road got sacked. Why wouldn't he come to Arsenal? Why wouldn't he come to Arsenal? He needs to, like, it's literally kind of go wrong, mate. You lot done me over. So Campbell came down the road. So Pochettino came down the road. George Graham went over to Tottenham. Oh, people come back and forward from the teams. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Gallas went to Tottenham after you played for Arsenal. So, there's no kind of like players. If you're giving people enough money, they'll go. And I believe, with like Pochettino, I believe he has something to prove as well. He might come over here and, you know, like win a league or maybe not win a league, but win a cup. And then, yeah. He'll laugh at Tottenham and say, look, you got rid of me. But I think Brendan Rodgers will be the one that we should go for. But like I say, it's the ambition of Arsenal Football Club. What are the ambitions of this Arsenal Football Club board? What are the ambitions the ambitions that are to win a league? Then go and get Brendan Rodgers because he can do it. And if the ambitions is just to kind of qualify for top four, it might be just to get Pochettino at the moment because he's already proven that he can do it. He's done it the last three seasons. And he got him to the Champions League final. Thank you for your question. And the last question came in from AFC Legacy. Do you think Leno is the best goalkeeper in the Premier League right now? I would say no. I know he's... Um, I know he's... Saved yesterday and... He's shot stopping, but that's because of the Arsenal defence. And I just think, like, the likes of Alisson, the likes of De Gea, even, like, the likes of keepers like Schmeichel, to me, they're better than, than Leno at the moment. Yes, he's saving, like, he kept, he basically saved us a point yesterday. From what he did. But I just believe there is players that are just a little bit above him. Just a little bit. Like the likes of probably I just think I think with the Leno situation is to kind of he puts our backs on and sometimes in a situation where he gets us in trouble and then bails us out. And then it looks good for him because he's bailed us out. But it's kinda of like sometimes just get rid of it. He sometimes I'll oh, play it short, play it short. But maybe that might be the past manager's sort of Formula that like, the way he wanted to play. So yeah, I believe like um, Leno is not the best goalkeeper, but he's definitely in the top five in the Premier League. So that's me. 
that is the sort of like situation I see with Lena. Like I say, there are my 10 questions. Thank you everyone for sending in your question. I'm so sorry if I couldn't answer the questions because some of the questions came in too late. But like I say, I want to say again, I hope you all enjoyed this. And I look forward to even seeing your comments from my reactions to your questions. Let me know how you feel about my answers. And if you really do enjoy this, I can make this one and do it every month. But thank you everyone again for watching. And have you already haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. You're only one click away. Football fans help football fans and Arsenal fans help Arsenal fans. Thank you again.